Coming up, we'll give you a tour of Dynamics 365 Customer Insights that builds a 360 degree view of your customers. Now we're gonna show you what it is, how to set it up, and how to get predictive recommended actions with Azure Synapse. So today I'm joined by Satish Thomas, a leader on Customer Insights. Welcome to Microsoft Mechanics. Thanks, Jeremy. Great to be on the show. So it's really a common situation, I think, that people find themselves in where it's really hard to curate customer information. You know, a lot of time you might be running different queries across different data sources. You're writing custom code sometimes to link up your data, and you might even have to customize the data views themselves, um, depending on where you want to surface those insights. So what's different in terms of the approach that we're taking with customer insights? Yeah. So, so we built customer insights to harness a fundamental change that's happening in the world today where customer data is essentially coming from everywhere and everything. Um, so if you think about every customer service call, a website visit, a purchase you make, generates data uh, that, that can then be harmonized and leveraged by organizations to deliver personalized experiences and over the long term build trust with customers, especially very important uh, in, in, in times like today. Uh, and our approach actually does the hard part of this for you, which means being able to bring in data from everywhere um, to help build that deep understanding of the customer. Uh, and, and we start by allowing customers to bring in data uh, using our pre-built connectors and all types of data too, by the way. For example, you know things like transaction history, point of sale data, uh, behavioral data, customer preferences, uh, product usage, and, and even survey data. Uh, and also being able to understand how customers are interacting with you. Uh, be it through your online uh, website, your mobile application, or even an in-store interaction. Um, and on top of all of that, of course, you can enrich your custom information with anonymized information from the Microsoft Graph at an aggregate level or third-party sources such as uh, brand affinity and interest. Uh, and then finally, and probably most importantly, all of this unified data and deep understanding of the customer can then be used uh, and be surfaced anywhere uh, at every touch point, wherever you engage with your customers uh, as an organization. Right, so uh, we're providing then a very sophisticated set of capabilities really to integrate and find insights in your data without all the time you might have spent before or the pain or the cost that it would have taken in the past or even currently. But can you show us an example of all of this kind of working in action? Sure, so let me start with the end user view and then later I'll show you how we made all of this happen. So, so you can see here that for any given customer, uh, in this case, it's a fictitious customer, Patty, we have a rich 360 degree view of the customer. Uh, and it's not just basic information like address, gender, uh, phone number, uh, but also historical information like the previous purchases, the events that Patty has attended, um, and interactions with our support team uh, to call out a few instances. And of course, it also shows the customer segments uh, that we've identified that she belongs to. Uh, and beyond the output of all of that, we have these AI models, right? So all of this is possible through the out-of-the-box models that we have available within Customer Insights. Uh, and of course, we have the ability to build custom AI models uh, using Azure Machine Learning and Synapse, as you mentioned earlier. And this is great. So uh, I, can, I can see then the, how this can become really useful in terms of just day-to-day -day use. But aside from the power app that you're showing now, what else or where else can I surface that information? So good question. So lots of places, right? So across all of your customer touch points, be it uh, an in-store experience when you walk in, uh, be it a contact center experience when you call in, um, on the web or anywhere. And this helps a ton towards making that customer experience consistent uh, at every touch point. Uh, and, and by the way, all of this, of course, is opt-in information. Um, so for example, uh, you can get an add-in from AppSource that allows you to see this rich 360 view of the customer within Dynamics 365. Uh, so here you can see it contextually show up uh, within our Dynamics 365 for sales application. And of course, it's, it's more than just our first party and Dynamics 365 applications. You can take this rich view of the customer and act on it uh, in third-party applications, be it Salesforce or Adobe, wherever your business users are. Uh, so we have a vendor agnostic view to customer data on the way in, in terms of bring, being able to bring in data from anywhere and everywhere, uh, and also on the way out in terms of wh which uh, systems of engagement you're able to um, integrate with. Cool, so this is mechanics though, and I think a lot of people watching are admins or data engineers. How do I actually pull all of that data in? How do I get all this stuff working? 
the first step, obviously, um, is to use customer insights to build um, that unified customer profile that, that I just showed uh, a little while ago. Uh, and being able to ingest all of that data from those disparate sources, right? Wherever it might be coming in from. So our challenge to customers is always anything uh, that can be used in the furtherance of better understanding your customers, bring it in, right? Um, so here you can see that I've, I've already connected um, customer insights to Dynamics 365, uh, and that get, gives me information from our sales, marketing, and service functions. Um, and you can also see some other data sources here, here already configured, um, the store events, the store CRM support, uh, and our device fulfillment information, and which customers are waiting for what. Uh, but there's more. In fact, uh, I'm able to connect to third-party systems as well um, using these available connectors. So as you can see here, I can add um, a new data source, import the data, uh, and, and, and go next here. Uh, and and this, is, this is pretty extensive. I can, I can essentially connect to Salesforce, a custom SQL instance, an Oracle data source um, that contain any customer data, be it survey data from customers over time. Again, super powerful uh, to be able to bring in all of this customer data uh, and be able to harmonize it um, uh, here. Okay, so you've defined then all your data sources, you've kind of wired everything up, brokered the connections, but what are the next steps for transforming that data? So now this is key, right? So being able to combine all of that data, uh, find those relationships to create those unified profiles, um, essentially creating keys where keys don't exist. So uh, customer insights uh, makes this pretty easy uh, uh, for companies to be able to do this. So as part of the unification process, uh, which entails map, match, and merge, and we'll walk through all of that in a bit. Um, so in the map stage, you'll be able to add entities. So in my case, um, I've added uh, two uh, for demo purposes, event attendees and contacts, uh, but of course I can add more. Um, on the right, you're able to see the, the to map to these entities in our common data model. Uh, for example, if I look at the event attendees, it's mapping attendee ID to the ID type um, and, and, and discovering that this is a potential primary ID. Um, so you'll see that we've already mapped all of this information like created on field into the calendar date. Uh, but of course, I can go in and change all of this stuff uh, if for some reason uh, uh, we got it wrong. So again, using AI, we're able to easily detect and map all of these uh, all of this data into the Microsoft Common Data Model. But of course, you can always go modify it uh, if you want to. So if you're new to Common Data Model, it's really a standardized common set of entities and attributes and metadata which is a shared data language that we use uh, by business and analytical applications and dynamics and the power platform and beyond. But so what's next here? Yeah, so, so after everything is mapped, we can now go to the match stage. Uh, and now I'm ready to move on to matching entities by going into, of course, the match stage within Unify uh, and set the order. So what this means is I can specify how I wanna match or consolidate the data that's coming from these disparate sources by finding matches in each cases between our contacts and event attendees uh, following through from what we just mapped. Uh, and of course, all of this data is anonymized for demo purposes, but you'll notice here that we have 11,000 unique customers and we've found 4,000 matches. So we can create rules to define the criteria for these maps, uh, or I'm able to go in and tweak um, all of these settings as well. So basic uh, matching gives me about four levels of precision, but I can go custom and that gives me a granularity of 100 for even finer uh, level of precision there. But you know, I can determine that using the slider uh, that you see here. So if I'm working on a finance use case, for example, um, I'd probably want to go pretty strict um, on my precision. Um, or if I'm working on name variances to be used in a marketing campaign, um, for example, you know, Bill Gates and William Gates, for example, being the same person, I probably will go less strict uh, on, on my matching criteria. So now you've got all of this stuff matched and you've kind of finished that step in the process. How do I resolve any conflicts? So you've got two different kind of tables at play with, with matching fields. What do you do then? Yep. yep, and that's a very common scenario, right? And that's where the merge policies come into play. So Customer Insights recommends attributes to merge uh, and how to reconcile those uh, conflicting data. Uh, so here I'll click on merge uh, and you'll see here that we were able to determine what the source of truth is um, if you have two different sources. Um, and the top fields represent the fields that are unique across both of the data sources that we just brought in. Um, and if I scroll down, uh, you'll see that the field exists in two tables 
um, and we're showing up which conflict resolution rule will kick in. Um, and that's pretty much it at, at a high level, right? It's a configuration type experience. And, and what we just walked through is the end-to-end -end unification process and what it entails. Uh, and, and this is the most complex part of, of building that unified customer profile. Great. So what do I do then when uh, most of my customer data is probably transactional? I know that there are a lot of things like list services, et cetera, to kind of enrich your data and, and bring in more different insights into it. Are there things that we can do here to enrich our data as well? Yeah. So absolutely. So this is a, a huge investment for us. So in addition to all the data that you have in your organization, we're able to enrich it with data uh, from the Microsoft Graph and other third-party providers. So as you can see here from a Microsoft perspective, uh, we have the ability to enrich with brand affinity, um, interest data, uh, and we also have a very extensible approach where third-party ISVs uh, can come and plug in uh, and provide their own enrichments through CI. Um, so the likes of Lead Space here uh, and Civic Science, just to call out a few examples that you're seeing on the screen here. What other mechanisms do you have then to enrich your data? Are there other things that you can do? Yep. So one of the things that we're really, really excited about is, is how we're enabling folks to do AI on top of all of this unified data. Um, so we're enabling out-of-the-box AI models for things like churn, next best action and lifetime value. And these become much more powerful and effective when you do it on, on top of the unified data versus silos. So you can see here that I've added one for subscription churn. Uh, so when I add, use this model, I, can, I just need to enter a few basic parameters uh, and, I'll, and I'll be able to get this running uh, and model uh, trained on my own data. Uh, and of course, all of this, you're also able to build custom AI models as well. But think about this, right? It's It's a it's a powerful way for any organization to use AI um, that was built by our own Microsoft data scientists, uh, even if they don't have data scientists on staff. So really democratizing uh, the possibilities of AI on top of customer data. Nice. So I remember, though, if we think back to our first demo, you had some segmentation uh, with Patty. How were we able to build those different segments on, on that app? So you know, once we have the unified view of the customer, we've enriched it now. Um, the ability for analysts to build actionable segments on top of it is key, right? So such as what you see here, high value customers, loyalty customers. So these are just lists of customers or segments. Um, and it's easy to add or edit these segments here as well. Um, so for example, let me show you what the edit process looks like for enthusiastic gamers, uh, if that is a segment. Um, and you can see that we're looking for purchase records that include Xbox, uh, that could be uh, uh, games or whether they're into consoles and accessories as well. Again, a very um, easy experience to, to build these segments without having to write any custom code. Good stuff. So now you've pulled all your data together and you've merged it into a clean set to really create that unified customer profile and also actionable segments and then showed us the AI that you can run on top of it. But how does it get surfaced then, that, like we saw in the Power App before and Dynamics into those different apps and experiences? Yeah. So. So you can use this deep understanding of the customer uh, that we've built up, uh, obviously in any of the applications, right? So Dynamic Series 5 applications or any third-party application or build your own um, experiences in Power Apps like, like, like what I showed earlier. So we have these inbuilt connectors that easily allow you to export the data from customer insights and use it in the context of those applications or perform deeper an analysis on that data whatever your use case might be. Um, in fact, you'll also see, in addition to all these third-party connectors that we have, we have a brand new um, Azure Synapse option here as well uh, uh, for limitless analytics, which, which we're very excited about as well. Can you show us that Azure Synapse integration and really what you can do there to extend it and kind of perform deeper analytics on your data? Yeah, sure. So, so with the combined power uh, of, of customer insights and Azure Synapse, you essentially uh, can do limitless analytics and also create uh, your own custom machine learning models and apply them uh, so that you can answer the specific and you know, unique questions relevant for your business. So um, the beauty of Custom Insights is that the work that we did earlier, um, all up to now, to build that deep understanding of the customer and profiles can then be leveraged in a variety of ways. So be it here in Synapse and using it through a notebook uh, or with our broader platform offering. So one of the things I like to describe uh, all of this is by saying, you know, you can start with our SaaS CDP application, uh, which is Customer Insights, and you'll never fall off a cliff. 
because of the extensibility possibilities with Azure Synapse, uh, Azure broadly, and of course our Power Platform, beyond what we enable out of the box in CI. So um, it, it, it really, really enables a lot of powerful use cases for our customers uh, to engage with their customers uh, in more intelligent and, and, and personalized ways. But where can you go, let's say I wanted to build one of these for myself and build all the stuff that you showed today, where would I go to learn more about this? Yeah, so you can you can go get started with the free trial. So we have, we, we have a five by five experience, which is five seconds to start and five minutes to get going. Uh, and you can do that at ak.mswac, try CI. Uh, but if you wanna learn more about how to integrate and build on top of custom insights, uh, uh, you know, some of the scenarios I, I, uh, we went through today, uh, you can look at our documentation, ak.mswacci.doc. Uh, and, and get started. Cool, thanks so much for joining us today, Satish. And thanks for all of you for watching today. And please check back to our Microsoft Dynamics 365 Essentials for IT series to learn even more. That's all the time we have for this show. Goodbye for now.